Now, there's two ways to change the oil on an LO206. You can do it, A, on the cart while you're at the track and stuff like that. When I'm in the shop, I'll usually take the motor off the chassis. I'll clean up the chassis a little bit. I'll put it on the bench. I'll do a wipe down of the motor, kind of check to make sure everything's tight. Uh, and I'll kind of show you how to change your oil on the LO206 both ways. Now, the LO206 can be a Junior 1, a Junior 2, a Senior motor, or a Master motor. It's all the same motor. This is a sealed motor. The only thing that changes on this motor is, from what I understand, it's the slide that's inside the carburetor. For the LO206 Junior 1s, the slide is a little different. For the Masters, it's definitely different. So anyways, all the motors are the same. They're all sealed, but I'm going to show you how to change your oil today. Now the tools that you will need to change your oil is you're going to need something to catch the oil in. I'm using nothing, nothing other than a Pennzoil one gallon container and then what I did is I just turned around and I cut it out. It works great at the track. You're going to need a funnel. Any funnel will do. This is the one I'm using. You're going to need something to put the oil in so that you can measure it. This has ounces, it has liters, it has all kinds of stuff. You can measure in ounces, pints and stuff like that. We are using ounces. The uh, LO206 motor uses 16 ounces of oil. Now you're gonna need an assortment of wrenches. I, you, you can use a 10 millimeter box end wrench. I've got another 10 millimeter that has open end at one end and it's got a ratchet at the other end. You can use that one. There's another one, an 11 millimeter that you can use that I can show, I'll show you what you can use this one for. You got a 15 millimeter, you're gonna need this for the triple, triple T um, slide for the um, motor mount. And then we got the uh, eight millimeter that you can use. If you don't have the triple T, some of them will have a, a slide system where you bolt the motor to it. And then you're gonna use this type of a wrench or this type of a, a, a tool to get it off. And then you're gonna have a magnetic uh, tray to where you can put things on and nothing falls off and stuff. So it's kind of a good idea. You can get these from like Harbor Freight for like $2.99 and stuff. And then the oil that I use is I use the Redline oil. I feel that this oil works the best. There's other oils out there. Uh, like I said earlier, I believe every 50 to 60 laps, you change your oil no matter what. If you want your engine to last, you got to change your oil. Doesn't matter what kind of oil you use, in my opinion, I feel if you just change your oil, you will prolong the life of your motor. So like I said, I use Redline and I've had excellent luck with it over the last five years. Now I'm running an Intrepid frame. This is an LO206 motor. This is the typical motor you will find on every co-cart that is racing this class. So you start from the basics. You're gonna have to disconnect your, your fuel line. You're gonna disconnect, if you have a Micron that comes to your uh, spark plug, you're gonna disconnect your Micron here. Up on top of your carburetor, you're gonna disconnect your slide and you're gonna pull that out. There's a 10 millimeter wrench here. You're gonna have to disconnect that. Now I'm running a triple T slide. Since I'm running the triple T slide, I have a 15 millimeter nut here holding the slide down. And in the back of the motor, there's another 15 millimeter. I've also got an, uh, a vent tube that's uh, hooked up here that I'm gonna have to disconnect. And then there's an overflow from my um, carburetor that comes down to this. So I'll disconnect the hose here, or you can disconnect it underneath the carburetor itself. Normally I'll disconnect it underneath the carburetor itself and then I'll turn around and I'll pull the vent tube out of here. The exhaust is hooked on, it's all self-contained. Once you've got all these bolts disconnected, then I'll stick it on the bench and I'll show you how you change your oil. Now before I start the job, I have a ma magnetic check, uh, catch tray that's got a magnet on the bottom that'll stick. That way I can throw all my nuts and all my parts in here and I don't lose them. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the vent tubes back here. And that's, it's just simply pulling it out. Same thing with down here, you just pull it out. Next I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to disconnect my slide and I'm going to slide it out. After I disconnect the slide, I'm going to grab onto my 10 millimeter and I stick it right here, put it on reverse. Now you can also do this with a wrench, I'm just using an impact. And just, you know, you don't have to hit it hard to where it twists stuff, but just kind of get it loose. Take it out with your fingers, you don't want to mess it up. Pretty simple to do from here. Okay, grab onto your, your line up on top. I might have to cut that one. And then you're gonna to have to turn around and take this. And, but just by pulling it out, what it does is it actually sticks 
right to the uh, spark plug wire itself. Up on top right here, I'm gonna have to cut that line. So let me go over to my toolbox. Right, this is what I need for what I'm going to go do now. So come back over here. I'm just gonna cut the safety wire right off. Doing it with one hand so I can hold the camera. I uh, didn't have a cameraman today. So that's all you gotta do. Take that off and dispose in trash can. So once that's done, then I can pull that out. Pull the wires out. I usually stick it up here in the steering wheel so it stays out of the way. Now once that's done, now you're going to need a 15 millimeter for here and a 15 for the back. Move our slide. I usually stick the slide up here. Then we'll go over here. I carry a 15 millimeter wrench. 15. It's not real tight. And don't have gorilla hands. When you have gorilla hands, these things end up getting messed up. Come back here. Same thing. You're going to stick it inside here and you just untighten it. Nothing hard. Now there's a washer underneath these nuts. That washer works with the triple T slide. You can see it right here. Normally what I'll do is go back over to the toolbox, grab my screwdriver, and you see you can just stick this underneath there and you can pry it up real easy and they come out of there. See it's got a spacing right here that rides on the triple T mount and stuff. Triple T does a fantastic job with what they make. One in the back, grab onto it, and as you see it just comes up. Stuff. Okay, now we got all of our stuff right there. From here, I'm gonna pull my motor back. Once I pull the motor back, then I gotta get the chain pop the sprocket back here. So, might have to put the can, no, it slides right off. Okay, now that I got that off, I can lift the motor out. And as you see, I'm doing this with one hand. So, motor is now off. Now what I can do is I can, you can see I got a little bit of oil residue right here. For the most part, my chassis is pretty clean. I do a good job when I'm at the races wiping it all down. But anyways, we got the motor out of the cart. Now I'll show you how to, how to change the oil. Now sometimes you'll need extra tools that I didn't put on my uh, tray to show you what you need. Sometimes you might need a set of uh, needle nose pliers. You might need a set of cutters. Uh, you know, you might need a different size torque or Allen head and stuff. And these are just the assortment of tools that I carry. So, and I'll put, do a different video later to show you some of the things I use so that I can go on the road as well as the uh, local club racing. And it's pretty easy. Okay, I got the motor out of my cart and I got it sitting on my workbench. What I do is I actually hang to where your oil is going to come out of this this plug right here. So I end up hanging it over maybe a half an inch. Then what I do is I put a chair underneath it. I got my stool and then underneath that I put my catch pan so that all the oil will drip into there. Now there's several different ways of taking the plug out. You can use a 10 millimeter open end wrench and you can do it like this. Okay. You go counterclockwise to untighten it, clockwise to tighten it. Very simple. Now, you can also use the ratchet. You got the ratchet end, but you still are only going to use the 10 millimeter open end. Now, you can also use an 11 millimeter box end. And the box end 11 millimeter will actually slide right over it and stuff. So those are the three ways you can do it to take your uh, oil out of the motor. Now, in the back of the motor, I'll flip it around a little bit, you have another drain plug right here in the back of the motor. You also have in the back of the motor a filler right here. And then if I come over here, you have a filler right here and you have a filler right here. This is actually used for the fuel pump. So we're not going to take this one off. When we refill, we're actually going to fill from this one. Okay. So we'll show you how this goes next. Now, before I actually will take and start emptying the oil, I'll take a wrench and I'll put it under the back side of the motor just to tip it forward a little bit so that when the oil starts draining, it'll go downhill and gravity works. So we come to the front. Now I do not have gorilla hands and I prefer personally to use an 11 millimeter. That's not to say that a 10 won't work and you just turn it and stuff. I just like to make sure that I don't screw up anything. Once you get it turning, what you're gonna do is you just 
pull it out by hand. You're going to pull it out and set it aside. It's just that simple. And you're just going to let it drain. Now I did want to mention something. Before I started this particular video, I did run my go-kart for probably five to six minutes, which makes the oil a little bit thin, it heats it up, and it comes out real easy. I didn't show that in the video because I actually started, up, started it up on the outside of my shop, and then I brought the go-kart inside to work on it. But I did want to mention, definitely start the go-kart for about five, ten minutes, and just warm it up and stuff like that. It'll just make it go a whole lot easier on the oil change. Okay, once you got all the oil and no more oil's draining, wipe it down, wipe your motor down a little bit. Start looking for things and stuff. While it's still draining, just start wiping it down and stuff. And keep, keep a clean motor, because that way you'll notice when things are not working right on your motor, when all of a sudden you got a spot that's got a whole bunch of oil on it, you'll go, huh, what is that? And you could actually say, oh, wow, I either, A, I blew a head gasket or I blew a side cover gasket right here, which the LO206 don't have that problem. When I used to race World Formula, we were blowing out these side cover gaskets quite often. These 206s, they're pretty bulletproof. So anyways, you just want to wipe down your motor a little bit before you uh, get it all complete. It gives it, the motor a chance to get every little bit out. Once you've done that, you're going to take your drain plug, you're going to put it back in. Now, when you tighten this thing, you don't have to tighten it down with gorilla hands. You just need to get it snug. I've seen people out at the track that just wrench this thing down to where you can't see any more of these threads. They've got it all the way into this block and they'll get a crack right here or a crack here or they'll get a crack on the underside. Don't be that guy. Just turn around and get it tight. It's not going to come out. If you notice a little bit of oil when you're out racing and stuff like that, then you can come back and re, you know tighten it up a little bit. But generally speaking, just tight enough. Okay? Now, I'm going to take the uh, wrench out of the back, and then I'm going to fill up the oil, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I've now put the oil, oil plug back in, and we're ready to get started. Now, this is the oil that came out. I don't know if you can see it from the video, but you can tell that that is still pretty green and stuff. That tells me I'm doing a good job with maintaining my motor. Jen, I've seen people at Curtis's shop, that's Curtis at Innovative Karting, this oil comes out and it's black. It almost looks like tar and stuff. Now, when I use the red line oil, I'm gonna use 16 ounces, and I have marked it by this line right here and stuff. So you're gonna put 16 ounces of oil in here, and I'm gonna bring it right up to the line. And if you look, the stuff that was coming out, that stuff is pretty green and stuff. You look at the old stuff. I'm not kidding, that was from the last race and stuff. So I think I'm doing an excellent job of my maintenance and this motor is going to serve me well for my duration of my racing with this particular motor. I'll usually run a motor about a season, rebuild it, or buy a new one. Anyways, I've got that right up to the line and then I'll show you how I put the oil in. Oh, by the way, before I do that, be the guy that recycles his oil properly. Here in Arizona, Napa will take your used engine oil. Uh, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, they will all take the used engine oil for free. What I do is, like this one's my full one, but over here at the back of my supply cart, I've got an empty one. So what I'll do is take the top off the empty one, and then when I'm done putting the oil in here, I'll take the funnel, I'll drop it in there, and I'll put all my old used engine oil into here. After I do that, then I can drop this off at my local store, like I said, either Napa, O'Reilly's, AutoZone here in Arizona, and they'll take it for free. And I'm doing my part to save the environment. I'm just that kind of a guy. Now, there's several ways to pull this plug off. I just use a screwdriver and I pop it. I don't put it on tight. I've seen people break these out at the track. They make a special tool if you want to buy it. Innovative Karting has it that goes over both of these two little round nubs right here. You can see the little round nubs. It'll go over both of those two and it's kind of like a T-handle and stuff. Instead of having something like this, which I built, that's a T-handle 
with a socket on the end. It'll actually have a piece welded to it right here. It's got two holes in it. It'll actually go in there. It's kind of a unique deal. I might make one for myself one of these days. A lot of the specialty tools that I have, I've built myself and stuff. So anyways, we got the cap off. You're gonna take your funnel. You're gonna stick your funnel in the hole, okay? Now sometimes what I will do here is I will take the, I'm gonna set this up just for a second so I can show you. I go the opposite way on my bench. I'll set my wrench right here and that just kind of pulls the motor back so the oil will go to the back of the motor. This is just something I do. Not everybody will do that, but it's just something I do. Come up here and just dump your oil in really slow. You don't want to make a mess. You can see it, it's coming out of there green. I tell you, I'm doing some pretty good maintenance on my motor because the motor that came out looks almost as green as the stuff I'm putting in. So, okay, once I've dumped that in there, pretty much down to the last drop. Now, like I said, I'll take the funnel, stick the funnel over here, and then I'll recycle my old oil. So you're gonna come over here. Oh, before I put that down, let me show you something else. Okay, what I did is I took the wrench that was underneath here. I put a 15 millimeter underneath here to tilt the motor back. If you look inside, you can just barely see the green oil and stuff. If you're to the right level, that oil will be right to there where it's about ready to come out and stuff. If your motor's on a flat level surface, which this is my welding table uh, that I use. It was the cleanest, cleanest workbench I had. So you're gonna put this back on there. And then, like I've told you, no gorilla hands. Kind of put that in there and just kind of give it a couple snugs. And Okay, that's it. You're done changing your oil. Now from here, I'll come up over here and I'll be that good person and I will recycle all my old oil. Actually, this is so green, I could probably fill up this gallon jug and I'll sell it to one of my fellow competitors and tell them, oh yes, this is good oil. No, I'm not gonna do that. But look at that oil, that is some clean stuff. So to make sure that I get every drop out of there, I'll leave it up on an angle like that. And we'll try to get, you know, so you can see it puddling up. All right. Now, basically, you're going to go in reverse. You're going to put the you're going to put the motor back on the cart. Piece of cake. Okay, I've wiped down the motor now. I put my filler cap back on, made sure it's snug. I put my uh, oil plug back in, made sure it's snug. Made sure that this is snug. I've wiped down the entire motor. Now, before you put the motor back on the cart. On the triple T mounts, sometimes I'll have gorilla hands and I'll kind of mess up these, these two edges on this side and on this side to where this piece right here, when it slides in there, it's supposed to slide back and forth real simple and real easy. It doesn't do that. So before I ever put it back together, I always make sure that these slide real easy. It kind of makes for a better race day and stuff. So, yeah, see that one just gets a little tight. I might turn around and file that a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I guess it does work all right. All right, that should, that should be pretty good. But anyways, just be aware of that and stuff. You know, look for any sharp edges and stuff like that that can cause problems. So we'll go ahead and put this motor back on the cart and get her up and running. Okay, this motor is very, very, very simple to install. You're gonna take the motor and set it in place. Once you got it set in place, you can see how this is just too big for the area. See, it just kind of jiggles around. So you're going to take these and these slide in place. You just push them down. Once they're down like that, you're going to take your nut, put your nut on top. Now, don't tighten. Don't you don't need to uh, tighten these up yet. Just put them in place. And come back here, and there's one that goes right down here, right in the back. It's kind of hard to see it. Anyways, it sits right here, okay? You can go ahead and put your vent lines on. They're, they're pretty simple. This one goes in the, this is my overflow for my carburetor. It goes into the, this, this is my vent for any oil that might come out of here. Okay, 
Okay, I now have the chain on, as you can see. So if I had to tilt the camera a little bit. After that, it's just nothing more than tightening up the chain, putting my fuel back on. Now the fuel, it's gotta go underneath the seat. It'll come around here and then I'll put another piece of safety wire on it and get that back into place and stuff. Then I'll put the uh, piece for my uh, spark plug on and I think I can show that with this particular mount. So what you're going to do with your uh, spark plug is the spark plug comes around and what you do is you're going to wrap the spark plug See if I can show it in the video. What you do is you wrap the, the wire around a couple times. And you get there's two holes in this particular piece right here. And then what you do is you stick it in the hole. See. Ah, gotta go around one more time. And then you'll tighten it up clip it onto place. Okay, and then I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, you kind of wrap it around three or four times. You can see where this wire comes through the top one, wraps around, then it comes through and it sticks out right here. So that's how you connect that. And I'll pull that, see if I can make that fit a little bit better. So, anyways, that's how you'll do that. So, We'll hook up our slide next. The slide is pretty simple. Slide comes down. There's two parts to the slide. One part right here is what sits on your idle adjustment screw. And that's your idle adjustment screw right here. So that's going to sit on this side. Your other side's got the spring. We'll go into that on further maintenance of a, of a go-kart at a later date. So anyways, you'll stick that in there and it'll slide into place. And then if you look down, it's not right in the center. So you're going to have to find that happy spot. Once you got that, you'll hold that in place. Like I said, I'm working with one hand, so it's kind of tough for me. Now you put the slide down. I'm getting pretty good at doing this with one hand. Imagine how, how good I could do if I used two. Just keep jiggling it around. It'll go into place. Check the throttle. Got my last screw goes right here. Whoop. Okay, I've now got the chain adjusted properly to where it moves up and down, approximately an inch to about an inch and a quarter. You'll come back to the front. You'll tighten up your 15, and like I said, no gorilla hands. You don't need it so tight to where you, you know, this motor ain't gonna go nowhere. You know, you're always tightening it and loosening it anyway because of uh, either sprocket changes and stuff like that. Okay, that's done. So, we got our fuel hooked up, we got our slide hooked up, we put our 10 millimeter bolt right here to hold our throttle cable. Throttle cable sounds good, works good. It's not making sounds at the top. We got our wire hooked up for our spark plug. We got our overflow for our carburetor. We got the vent for our exhaust. I mean, uh, the vent for our, uh, oh, what do you call it? For our valve cover. And everything seems to be going. Everything's free, nothing's touching. Let's fire it up. I'm actually gonna fire it up in the shop. Normally I don't do this. Let's see. I'm going to set the camera down for a second. Well, that's just about all there is to changing your oil. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I hope I was gave enough details to make it easy. Um, I do it every 50 to 60 laps. 
Um, and that's all there is to it. I've learned my lesson over the years. Uh, sometimes I went 70 or 80. The motors just didn't last. I'm not sure why. Uh, Briggs and Stratton might tell you different. So might your other fellow racers. This is just how me at Race Bum TV is going to continue to maintain my go-karts. I can't afford to be buying motors all the time. It's not like I make a bunch of money with this YouTube channel. Anyways, I hope you this is enjoyable. I hope it's uh, informative. Uh, and I'll see you guys at the races. Have a good day, everybody. Now, if you're at the races and you need to change the oil, you're gonna do a lot of the same steps with the exception of taking the motor completely off the chassis. So the only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your uh, oil pan and you're gonna put it underneath here like this and you're gonna have to hold it with your hand or you're gonna have to make up some gizmo to hold it underneath the motor so that you can change the oil. That's one thing that you're gonna have to do. Second thing you're gonna have to do, you're still gonna take the drain plug out and you're just gonna let the oil drop into your oil pan. Once that's complete, you're gonna just wipe down your uh, chassis, you're gonna wipe down the area and put your oil plug back in. Then you're gonna come over here and you're gonna pull your, your, oil pl uh, your oil filler off and you're gonna fill the cart. That's the only difference between doing it at the track and doing it at the shop. I prefer to do it at the shop before I go to the track and then if I run an excessive amount of laps, then I will do an oil change at the track. But that's just how I do it. Um, others might show you a different way and I'm sure their way works also. This is just a basic how to change your oil.